Hello, hello, hello. Good day. Uh, welcome back to Lawrence Explains Online Academic Tuition. So today all I wanted to do was just to do a quick review video as we've got the GCSE results in from yesterday and there were a few talking points from that that I just wanted to discuss briefly um, and a few bits and pieces I wanted to communicate with students as well. So obviously the results came through yesterday. Um, as predicted, as there usually is, there was a slight increase in grades. Um, this year it was a little bit larger than in other years and this has been accounted for in, in various ways. To be honest with you, the, there is a very obvious reason for this, um, for this increase. But first of all, let's just have a look at some of the statistics. So this is from the BBC, but these are publicly released statistics, so you can pretty much get them anywhere. Um, we've got an increase in the top grades, so sevens, eights and nines from uh, 26 to 28.9%, so nearly at 29%. Um, I would wager probably the majority of those would be at a grade seven, and then you, you will have fewer in the grade eights and grade nines. And then we've also got an increase in four, um, four Cs or above, so four fours or above, so 77 um, from 76.3. So. Um, in terms of people getting four C's, we, we're still getting, you know, it's around about just over three quarters of the population getting four C's or four fours in the kind of modern grading. Uh, I would like to see the statistics on who got a four in both maths and English. I don't think that will be quite as high as 75%. I think it will be slightly less than that. I think it will be around 70%, maybe even high 60s. So I would like to see those statistics. Um, and it just details the breakdown and so on. Um, yeah, we've got interesting grades. Yeah, some girls are doing a little bit stronger than boys in just across, across the grades, you know, in terms of grade, higher grades and so on. The most notable thing that really for me was, um, I'll come back to the, the boys, girls thing in, in a moment. Because it is something that's worth talking about. But the most notable thing for me was the um, the increase in the number of pupils getting all grade nines. Now, when these assessments started, when would that have been? Uh, I think two years ago. Uh, this new format: there were only six hundred pupils who got all grade nines. No, in fact, there were six hundred pupils who got seven or more nines. Um, so this is a huge increase in the very top grades. Uh, I think I think what that's telling me is the first year, unfortunately, those students in the first year, those top students, um, probably were downgraded, I would say, were, were harshly graded. That was my feeling that year. Um, so it was unfortunate for those people. Be, those would be the people who were going on to university now. Um, so it's yeah, just one of those things, really. Um, or perhaps they were in their first year of university now. It's, Anyway, the, the years are all blurring to one, but um, that increase is, is quite significant. So that's something that's sort of worth thinking about. Those pupils will all be applying for, you know, pretty much all of them will be applying for really competitive courses in a couple of years' time. Um, <clears throat> got the breakdown across different countries as well, or different parts of Great Britain. Some nice photos of students celebrating their results, which is always good. And we've also got regional breakdowns as well. Um, you can see Southeast is doing very well. Uh, London has the highest uh, number of students getting you know, grade sevens, basically, got 34% and a half percent getting grade sevens. Um, yeah, that's all quite. Interesting, you know, the sort of socio-economic aspect and then also the the institutional aspect as well. Um, we have one student here, who uh, Roman, who says he, he thinks he would have done a little bit better if he'd been he'd, if he'd actually sat exams and rather than being continuously assessed constantly. Um, so that's something I just wanted to talk about now, and I think that. 
the, the difference in assessment this year, it does actually explain quite a lot, to be honest with you. So, um, firstly, it's completely normal that results are going to be better when we have a continuous assessment. That is clearly going to be the case. It was a case at A-level. It's really obvious that's going to happen. Uh, because conscientious students will just you know, do as much as they can to make sure uh, they produce as much good quality work as possible. So if they're solid students with good ability and are conscientious, they're really going to make sure that they're producing their best quality of work throughout the year. Um, and that's much more of a guarantee than going into an exam and then on the day itself, you could have a good day, you could have an average day or you could have a bad day. And it's just one of those things. The paper might just be a little bit off kilter. It might be just a slightly quirky paper in a few sections and that could take a student down a grade or two. Um, whereas another student might really respond well to something new and something challenging. So it's really not surprising that this year we have higher grades than in previous years. Um, it, this is always going to be the case, frankly. Um, so that's something that doesn't surprise me at all. This particular student thinks he might have actually done better with exams. Um, I think that is there is there is a case for that for some students. Some students do actually thrive in exams, um, and you know they they kind of do what's necessary through the year, and then when it gets to exam time, they really kind of thrive. And so those students, and it's it's quite a bracket of students, would have uh, potentially. Uh, not not done as well this time round. Um, I, I do think that potentially also, I think that may also feed into the fact that the boys have not done quite as well this year. I think that may also feed into that as well. And um, that's sort of been my my experience um, with boys. They tend to they tend to really pick up around the last couple of months before exams. Uh, they work you know steadily like throughout, but. They really tend to pick up in those last couple of months. Um, I don't know that motivation kicks in or what have you, but I've seen that a lot. I've seen a lot of students, um, you know, going, you know, sometimes up, even up to a couple of grades. I've seen people go from a seven to nine in the last six weeks um, before their GCSEs, and even I'm shocked at times. But I just think, yeah, you know, this guy's really getting his act together at this point. Um, Equally, I have seen some girls do the same as well. Um, so it's just a, a bit of speculation on why this is. Um, there, are, there are other issues as well. I, I do think there's yeah, there's other issues as well. So we see things throughout education where like um, yeah, maths in particular doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be that appealing to girls going on to A level and so on. And then, for example, English doesn't seem to be as appealing to boys. So I think it's something that does need, I think it's a lot to do with the branding of the subjects, to be honest with you. I think that's something we, we could definitely look at. You know, I look at the, the way the subjects are delivered and branded and even the content. I think it's frankly quite uninspiring a lot of the time. And so, um, yeah, that's something we could work on definitely for boys and girls. Um, so the last thing as well that was just the, um, was the, um, the minister talking about, you know, the learning loss and so on of COVID, you know, how much have we actually lost, aside from exams, how much have we actually lost in terms of education? Um, it's a good question. It's a good question. I, I'm actually more concerned with how much students have lost in terms of their lives than, than their education. I think their education has pretty much stayed on track with online learning and then being back in the system this year. But what is actually more concerning to me is, is their development, their ability to like be free young people. Um, it's a very strange period for people to be going through their formative years. So that's more of a concern for me. I'm not as concerned with the learning loss um, for a number of reasons. Um, I do think online learning has offered quite a good adjunct. I also think that students in general are better equipped than ever before. Um, schools are better, have got better facilities. Teaching standards are high. Um, and 
I think also students are generally more conscientious as well than in previous uh, previous decades. I don't know when it kind of started, but um, you know, over the years, students I, I've noticed the pattern in students becoming more and more conscientious as time goes on. Um, an average student now is probably as conscientious as like really quite a good student. I don't know, twenty years ago. It's, that's that's my feeling, and um, that's what I've been seeing. Um, so I think it's something, you know, that's kind of students are absorbing that they, they can um, they can set a foundation for themselves for their future um, with getting some decent grades. It's, it's it's a you know it's a good thing to do to start you know the next phase of your life, and I think students really have absorbed that message now. It's it's getting absorbed in previous years. In previous decades, that wasn't always the case. Um, so I do see a lot of conscientious students as well. So I think that's also another reason that these grades are going up. Not that people are getting more intelligent as such. It's it's that there is a more diligence and, and kind of more conscientious approach. Um, so that's pretty much everything for the uh, just the review of today's grades. I think you know I'm glad a lot. People, most people feel like they're coming out fairly treated this year, which I think is good. Um, if you have struggled with um, with GCSEs or you haven't got the results you want, I'm going to post below a link to my GCSE English Reset course. Um, all you really have to do at this point is, if you're if you if you're interested, um, just go to the link, just sign up your name and email. And that will send you through uh, basically just a, five, a series of five emails from me, giving you some tips, giving you some downloads. There's a couple of videos in there as well. Um, just kind of giving you some information, giving you some useful stuff. Um, and if you're interested, you can also go on to look at you know, potential options to do some further work after that. So if you, if you didn't get that GCSE English and you, you're not sure what to do, now or you know someone who's in that position definitely i would really recommend just sign up your name and email and you're going to get some uh, really helpful stuff through um so i will leave it there for now um congratulations everyone on your results and, and even if things didn't go your way uh don't be too concerned there's lots you can do um, to uh, get back on and and progress again with re reset exams and so on